Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and this is your all-encompassing guide to what to do when you're here in Dubai, one of the most amazing places you'll ever visit on Earth. Now, unless you've been sleeping under a rock for the past 10 years or so, you'll have heard of Dubai, the giant mega city that's arisen from the desert. And what a city! They've built some of the most awe-inspiring attractions that you'll ever visit on Earth. But let me tell you about one thing. Dubai is incredibly massive. It's about 30 miles from end to end and it keeps getting bigger every year. Most likely, you'll stop off here at Dubai International Airport, one of the most lavish airports that you'll ever come across in your entire life. I'm seriously not joking about that. And the best way to get to your hotel from the airport is to use the metro system. All the signs are in Arabic and English and they're pretty easy to figure out. To travel, you'll need a NOL card, which is basically a prepaid card that you can get from any ticket booth Simply get the card, go to a turnstile, press it against the turnstile and away you go. It's that simple. The metros themselves are brand new, they're modern, efficient, always on time, clean, fast and basically the best way of getting around the city of Dubai. You can alternatively use taxis and buses but they won't get you there any faster or cheaper than the metro. And yes, sometimes it can get a little crowded, but most of the time it's like this and it's pretty manageable. The first thing I'll show you is where I stayed during my trip here in Dubai, Dubai Marina. As you can imagine, it's a marina and it's full of tall rice skyscrapers that are effectively luxury residences that you can rent or buy here in Dubai. They're even building more of them as the days go by. This is a very lovely area and there's lots of water and boats because, you know, it's a marina. But overall, this is a cool place to hang out. It's got lots of restaurants, bars, shops, etc. And this place is pretty damn stunning during the day and during the night. But one of the cool things about the marina is its beach. Yes, the skin laws don't generally apply here at Dubai Marina Beach. And you can sunbathe and do everything else that you can do on a normal holiday right here in Dubai without fear of being prosecuted. So it's a lovely place to spend some time in the sun if that's what you're after. And the beaches here, as you can imagine, are pristine and perfect. You'll notice that about Dubai in general. Everything pretty much is perfect. They even have a Real Madrid bar for some reason. So guys, it's sunset here in Dubai and I don't know if you can see that behind me but that is what a sunset looks like here in Dubai I'm not making that up it does actually look like that yeah Dubai Marina is huge you've got to spend some time exploring this place because this place is seriously massive and the views are pretty immense now I highly recommend coming to Dubai Marina just as the Sun goes down like it is right now because you get some glorious photo opportunities and you get to watch the marina light up like a Christmas tree. Just like this. Okay, this isn't my best video footage as this is basically on a mobile phone, but you get the idea. But let's say you want to explore actual authentic Dubai. So none of that touristy stuff, you'll need to go to an area called Deira. And this is at the north end of the city where you'll find stuff like this. Old Middle Eastern buildings, ports, lots of old rickety boats. And to be honest, this is what normal life is kind of like for the residents here in Dubai. There's a lot of historical things that you could see whilst you're here, and I highly recommend that you take a morning to at least explore all the buildings. Right next to Deira is Dubai Creek. This is basically a creek that is inhabited on both sides. Now you can't actually cross the creek directly by foot, so you're either going to have to take the metro or you're going to have to take one of the many boats that skip to and from each side. And to be honest, it's the cheapest attraction you'll ever do. I think this cost the equivalent of about, what, 30p to cross the river? Highly recommend you do that because you get some nice video and photo opportunities when you do. 
it's really interesting to see what people actually live like in actual Dubai. Deira is also home to the famous souks. If you don't know what a souk is, it's basically a giant market where you can barter with the locals for things like spices, clothing, souvenirs, gold, etc. Admittedly, the way they do business here in the East is very different to how they do business there in the West. And if you don't like being hassled to come in and buy stuff, then this is probably not for you. If you're an Asian like me, you're kind of used to bartering anyway, so this didn't really bother me as such, but I know that it bothers quite a lot of my friends. I personally didn't feel the need to buy anything whilst I was here, but it's kind of nice to walk around and see some of the interesting things you can buy, but bearing in mind, if you do walk around these souks, you're probably going to get hassled one way or another, so bear that in mind that it's not a completely perfect science. Whilst you're here in Deira, check out the various mosques and the Dubai Museum, which has some very, very cool artifacts here. And I highly recommend that you at least spend a morning around Deira just to explore all of this, because it's all very, very interesting. But when you're going around Dubai, you'll be absolutely impressed that a city like this that's modern, clean and efficient used to look like this, which is basically a desert outpost. So in 20 years, it's turned from that to this, which is absolutely incredible. And speaking of incredible, let me show you this attraction that's near Deira, the Dubai frame. If you're thinking that it's a giant picture frame in the middle of the desert, you'd be right. The best photo opportunities are from here, the Lulu Hypermarket, right across the street, where you can get some pretty damn good pictures of it, because quite frankly, it's massive. And as you can imagine, the queues to get in it can be quite lengthy and you might be waiting a while. When you actually get in it, spend some time to walk around the perimeter because you just can't believe that this is a giant picture frame that is in the middle of the desert. It's absolutely stunning. Your entry ticket affords you entrance to the museum and exhibit. But the best thing about it is actually the elevator ride that goes up and you could see out of the window. If you're petrified of heights, obviously this is going to suck a little bit, but other than that, I found it to be pretty cool. When you get to the top, you get a short talk from this guide about the Dubai frame, and then he lets you explore everything around. The best thing to do is walk along the last floor, which is this thing right here, and you could see just how high you are and just how far you'll fall if you plummet to your death from up here, which is kind of crazy. You also get some of the best views of Dubai whilst you're up here, so I highly recommend taking lots of pictures, but bear in mind that this is a very busy attraction. Needless to say, it can get quite busy and quite crowded here, and the queue to get back down is, well, it's that basically, so yeah, you might be up here for quite a while. But overall, I highly recommend that you at least spend some time to explore the park that's around the frame, seeing as though you already paid for it. But no attraction is bigger than the most famous building in all of Dubai, the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. Now, I actually came here when the sun went down to try and get some nice sunset pictures and to watch the fountains go boom. And boy, does it go boom. They've got fountains very similar to what you might find at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. And as you can imagine, you have to get there pretty early because there's a whole crowd of people waiting for the show. It goes off every half an hour from about six o'clock. So if you miss a show, you only have to wait about half an hour for another one to start. And when it does start, you get these magical musical fountains that do wonderful, wonderful things to various Arabic or English music in the shadow of the biggest building in the world which they illuminate and project pretty cool things on. Honestly, this is definitely worth the trip alone. And to be honest, this part is free. It doesn't actually cost anything to do any of this bit. But as you can imagine, if you want to watch multiple shows, people just hang around. So you'll be having a hard time trying to jostle your way just for a decent view of the light show. I highly recommend that if you do want a decent view, try and get to higher ground, i.e. go to the Nike shop that's in the mall to watch it, or go to one of the restaurants above. 
If you want to go into the Burj Khalifa, you're going to have to book in advance because as you can imagine, it's very, very busy and tickets on the day are very rare. It takes a while to actually get to the lifts to get you up there. But once you're actually through all of the queues, and boy, there's a lot of them, you'll get into the lift where you get this cool light show to indicate just how high this building is compared to every other building in the world. When you get to the top, there's plenty of photo opportunities that you could take with yourself, but bearing in mind that the lighting situation, especially at night, isn't particularly fantastic, so you're going to have to be a little bit creative with your lighting. That said, I know exactly what I'm doing, and I managed to get some decent shots and video from all the way up here, so it wasn't too bad. You can actually pay to go up various levels, and obviously the higher you go, the more expensive it gets. I only went halfway up the Burj Khalifa, and to be honest, that was good enough for me. You can see and photograph plenty from here, so if you're on a budget, just stick to the halfway point. But overall, I highly recommend that you do the Burj Khalifa once during the day and once during the night, just so that you can compare the two side by side. It really is a lovely place, and definitely one of the highlights of your trip. As with all attractions, exiting the attraction can be just as painful as queuing for the attraction in the first place. So bear that in mind that you will be queuing for quite some time for anything here in Dubai. Now the Burj Khalifa is attached to the Dubai Mall, one of the biggest shopping malls in all of the free world. And to be honest, it's a bit of a maze. It's very, very easy to be lost in this place, so I highly recommend that you consult the maps that are constantly nearby, because you will get lost. And even following the signs doesn't necessarily help you, because it can be quite disorientating. The malls here are pretty palatial, and you probably won't find any nicer shopping malls anywhere else in the world. The sheer amount of money it took to build this place must have been staggering, especially some of the sculptures that are on display. One of the cool things about Dubai Mall, apart from its obvious attractions and its obvious size, is this, the Dubai Ice Rink, which is slap bang in the middle of the mall. So the ice here at Dubai Ice Rink, it's actually not bad. I mean, I've been to a lot of rinks before and the rule of thumb is that if it's warm, the ice is generally going to be rubbish, but actually not bad. It's definitely skatable. And the fact that not many people like ice sports here is, well, it means it's quiet, so you can actually do whatever the hell you really want to do, within reason, of course. But Dubai Mall is just one of several malls that's worth visiting. I highly recommend visiting just two, Dubai Mall and the Mall of the Emirates, which you'll find slap bang in the middle of Dubai. Now, the Mall of the Emirates, once again, like Dubai Mall, is very, very palatial, it's very fancy, and you're probably going to need quite a bit of money to spend if you want to shop here. And yes, it's fairly grand, fairly lavishly decorated, and you can spend at least a morning here if you are a shopper. So don't be surprised if you get lost, follow the maps and you'll probably still get lost, but in general, it's quite a nice mall to walk around. But why am I spending so much time talking to you about another mall? Well, the reason why is because of this place, Ski Dubai. Yes, you can actually ski right here in the shopping mall. So yes, guys, you can actually ski here in the middle of the desert. I can't actually believe that there's a skiing slope right here in the middle of a shopping mall, but there is, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. Now, I must admit, I've not been skiing for quite some time, but I managed to pick it up pretty quickly. And my goodness, this is actually an amazing indoor ski slope, way better than the one I use in Manchester. And if you are a skier or snowboarder, I highly recommend that you actually pay the money to check this place out, especially the Black Run, it was actually quite challenging. Really, really recommend skiing here in the middle of the desert. I can't believe I actually just said that, but yeah, it's true. You can actually do this right here in the middle of the baking heat. If you come during Ramadan, just like I did, they'll offer you free things like free food, free access to the ice park, etc. And it's all very, very reasonably priced. Even though it's still expensive compared to most things, you actually get to do things like visit the penguins. 
yes, you actually get to touch penguins, which is quite cool. So what about the other world famous building? This one right here, the Burj Al Arab. Well, yes, it is one of the most famous buildings in all of Dubai and probably all of the world. But unless you're staying here, or unless you've got a dinner reservation, they won't let you anywhere near it. The closest I got was this, the beach right next to it. Yes, they're pretty security tight around the Burj Al Arab, so the closest I got was this public beach. It's a very lovely public beach, don't get me wrong, and you get some great video and photo opportunities of the Burj, but if you do want to actually visit it, bear in mind you either have to be a guest there, or you either have to have a dinner reservation. And there's several lines of security that will double check you every step of the way. There's no chance of you sneaking up on the place. And even though this is a very lovely beach at sundown, I actually prefer the beach at Dubai Marina. Oh, hello there. At Dubai Marina, because quite frankly, it was a lot longer and it was a lot cleaner. So yeah, if you're absolutely dying for a beach, go to Dubai Marina. Whilst I'm speaking about Dubai Marina, you might also want to visit that lovely thing over there, the Palm and the Atlantis. Now, the Atlantis is this famous shaped hotel that's right on the end of this famous shaped island, the Palm. And you could spend some time exploring this place for sure. And again, unless you're a guest here, they don't actually let you anywhere near the hotel grounds. The best way of getting in, if you're not a guest, is to actually go inside the aquarium, where you have to pay an entrance fee, of course, but it's still quite nice, even though it's an aquarium. Visit one of the beaches that's near the Atlantis, but not actually the Atlantis beach itself. Or you can visit the nearby water park. And boy, that's a lot of fun. Especially if you're baking away in the desert heat and you want to cool down, this is an awesome way to do it. The water slides are a whole bunch of fun, and I highly recommend that you actually spend some money to go to this water park, because some of the rides are absolutely savage. Totally, totally a lot of fun. But if you want the most extreme amount of fun, you could see the palm by jumping out of a plane. Yes, you can actually see the palm from way up high by doing a skydive. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail because quite frankly, I made a separate video about it here, but suffice to say, this is probably the best thing I did in Dubai. It was also the most expensive, but I highly recommend that if you want to jump out of a plane once in your life, do it here at Skydive Dubai over the palm. It doesn't get much better than that. If that sort of adrenaline isn't your thing and you actually want to see the desert, I highly recommend that you take a tour bus to the middle of the desert. You can actually go on guided tours and they'll actually take you into desert areas to do desert kind of things. So you can do things like dune bashing where you're in a four x four and they basically thrash you around the dunes. It can get quite aggressive, but I actually enjoyed this. You can do things like quad biking where you get four by fours and go around sand dunes. You can ride camels, which was actually kind of not at all like riding a horse. And you can even do some sandboarding, which I totally sucked at. Some of the tours also give you food and drink, which is kind of a bit of a bonus. Enjoy the night show. Whilst you're having dinner, sometimes they'll actually entertain you with Middle Eastern entertainment. So that's kind of cool. Go check out this guy. If you're willing to drive further afield, I highly recommend that you drive to Abu Dhabi and go to Ferrari World. And once again, I made a separate video about this right here on my channel, be sure to check that out. Go to Ferrari World, but make sure all the roller coasters are open before you actually set off. The other thing that I highly recommend you do in Abu Dhabi is visit here, the Grand Mosque. So guys, it's sunset here at Abu Dhabi and I'm here at the Grand Mosque. And I've just come from Ferrari World and I'm decked out in Ferrari Red, so I stand out like a sore thumb. But let's see what this place has got to offer if I can get anywhere near it. I don't know if you can hear that, but this is what's just happened at sundown.
overall guys, I highly recommend that you visit Dubai once in your life because it is one of the most amazing places that you'll ever see. Not just the architecture, but the culture, the things to do, and honestly, I know it's going to be a little expensive, but trust me, spend the money and go, because you won't find any other place like this. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to Dubai. It's located here in the United Arab Emirates, and you'll basically need flights and accommodation. Most likely, you'll fly into Dubai International Airport. To get from the airport to your hotel, you'll need to use the metro system. Once again, get a prepaid NOL card and basically use the metro system to get to where you want to go. If you arrived in the middle of the morning, like me, and the metros were closed, unfortunately, this forces you to use the taxis, and they are incredibly expensive. So bear that in mind, use the metro card, it is easily the best way of getting around the city. You can also hire a car, but when I hired my car to go to Abu Dhabi, the deposit was extremely high and they actually refused to return it. So I had to call my credit card company and it was all a bit of a palaver. So honestly, use the metro system, it is your friend. If you're looking for a place to stay, honestly, stay next to a metro station. You'll thank me for where you're not walking miles through the desert heat just to be able to get around places. And to be honest, anywhere is good. I picked Dubai Marina, but if I'm being brutally honest, if you stay anywhere near the middle or the north end of the city, I think you'll be absolutely fine. The cost to do the attractions? As you can imagine, Dubai is an expensive place. And all of the attractions I did, they weren't exactly cheap. Some of them had decent deals on because it was Ramadan when I visited, but in general, Dubai is quite a pricey place. Food and drink especially when you're out is quite pricey, and I highly recommend that if you do come here to Dubai, be prepared to spend money. In terms of the actual attractions themselves, I highly recommend that you do the action-based ones, such as the skydiving, the indoor ski slope, the indoor ice rink, etc and also venturing out into the desert. They were a whole bunch of fun, and you'll probably never do that again in your life, so I highly recommend that you do just that. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, Dubai, as you can imagine, is a Middle Eastern country with very strict laws. I actually made separate videos about what you can and can't do when you're here in Dubai, and I highly recommend that you check those out. So bear that in mind that the laws that you're used to here in the West, they don't apply here in Dubai. And at all times, be respectful and always cover up skin, just in case you offend somebody here. Remember, we're not in the West anymore, we're in somebody else's country, so I highly recommend that you learn the laws and obey the customs here in Dubai. Overall guys, I think you're going to have a wonderful time if you do come here to Dubai for a holiday or for a long stay. If you have found this video at all helpful, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below and let me know if you have any other bucket list suggestions by tweeting them at me. If I get enough suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. There were literally thousands of them, hundreds of thousands perhaps, I don't know. They were, this place is huge, don't get me wrong, and not only is it huge, there's lots of people that come here, and I mean lots, and yeah, they had food on maps and stuff, and I was invited to sit down, but I didn't feel right, because obviously I'm not Muslim, so I politely declined, but I don't know what went on here, but...